What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G to help you make the most of the camera. Now before we go any further, as always, I do want to remind you to hit that subscribe button, and if you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite accessories. But with that being said, Let's get into it. So the first thing I want to show you is a quick way to access your camera. Now opening the camera app on the home screen is easy enough, but if you're doing something else on your phone, say you're browsing the web for example, and you want to capture something quickly in the moment, all you really have to do is double press your power key like this, and it's going to open the camera right up. So let's try that one more time. There we go. Definitely real easy. And the cool thing about this feature is it even works when your display is off. So if we double press it one more time. As you can see, even though the display was off and the phone was locked, you can still easily open the camera. So if you're ever in a situation where you want to capture something really quickly in the moment, it's definitely a nice shortcut to have. Now this feature is enabled by default, but say you don't actually use the normal camera app to take your photos. Maybe you're using a third party app like Open Camera for example, or maybe you just want to use Snapchat instead. No matter what the case may be, you can also customize this shortcut to open pretty much anything you want. And to do this, all you have to do is go to settings. From here, go to advanced features. From this menu, go to side key, and as you can see, again, by default, it is going to open the camera, but if you want, you can have this shortcut open pretty much any app on your phone. So I currently have it on Snapchat, so now no matter what I'm doing on the phone, whenever I double press the power key, it's going to open Snapchat. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to use the ultra wide camera. So we currently are in photo mode on the camera app right now, and to get to the ultra wide camera, what you're going to do is tap on the little point five right here. And as you can see, now we got a much wider angle where you can fit a lot more content in the frame. And then to go back, simply hit the one right here and it's going to go back to normal. And now for the complete opposite, let's take a look at how to use the macro camera. So to do this, what you're going to do is go to more right here. And from this menu, macro mode is right here. Tap on this. And now we are currently in macro mode where you can get some nice close up detailed images. Keep in mind when you're taking macro photos, you want to be close enough for it to actually focus. Otherwise, everything's going to be blurry. And this also goes for when you're done with macro mode, because of course, when you're taking regular photos, you don't want that to be in macro mode. So when you're done with the close detailed images and you want to take normal pictures again, make sure to go back to normal by hitting the back button. Now I'm going to show you how to customize your quick access menu. Now essentially, the quick access menu is right down here. By default, you're going to have portrait, photo, video, and then of course the more tab. But you can customize this. Say you're using macro mode all the time and you don't really use portrait mode. To change it up, what you're going to do is go to more. Hit the plus icon right here. And now you can drag and drop whatever you want. So if you want to get rid of portrait mode, go like this. And say you want to add macro mode. There we go. And be sure to hit save when you're done. And now as you can see, we got photo and video, which by the way, you can't take that out. That is always going to be there. And then we got macro right here. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to take high efficiency photos and videos. So essentially, this feature is going to change the file format. So when you're taking photos and recording videos, you're going to have pretty much the same quality, but the file size is going to be a lot smaller. And considering at 64 gigabytes, this phone really doesn't have the best internal storage, it's definitely nice that we can do this. So what we're going to do is go to settings. And in this menu, there are two different things you're going to want to change. First of all, for photos, toggle on high efficiency pictures. And this is going to change your photos to HEIF files. And now you're going to want to go under videos and turn on reduce file size. And with this on, instead of MP4s, your videos are going to be HEVC files. Now keep in mind, while this feature is nice to have, and in fact a lot of higher end phones actually have it on by default, these files are not always compatible with everything. So if you're using your photos and videos for a more specialized kind of thing, and compatibility is more of a concern for you, then you might not actually want to use this. But I will say from experience, I have this feature on on my iPhone, so all my thumbnails end up being HEIF files, and converting them is pretty easy anyway. So I want to say for most people, you're probably not going to have any trouble using this feature. Now I'm going to show you what you can do with the volume keys. So by default, if you press either of them, it's going to take a picture or record a video, depending on the mode you're in, but we do have a couple options. So to get to these, go to settings. From here, go to shooting methods. From this menu, go here. And as you can see, by default, the volume keys are going to take a picture or record a video. You can also have it zoom in or out, or control the system volume. So for this example, we're going to do zoom. And now if we go back to the camera, volume up is going to zoom in and volume down is going to zoom out. And it does go all the way to the ultra wide camera. 
Now the next thing I'm going to show you isn't necessarily something you would do per se, but it's more an answer to something I've seen a lot of you ask about in the comments in my other videos. So in case you're wondering, you can scan QR codes with this phone, and you actually don't even need to enable any special setting to do it. In fact, if we go to settings, as you can see right here, scan QR codes is on by default, so again, you don't need to do anything special, just simply point the camera at the QR code, and it's automatically going to scan it. So definitely a real cool feature, and while you might not use it all the time, it's always going to be nice to have. Now I'm going to show you a feature called the floating shutter button. This is basically going to give you an extra shutter button, so if you're taking a picture with one hand like a selfie for example, it's going to make things a lot easier. I actually had to use this feature myself when I was taking test photos, I never thought I was actually going to do it, but it definitely did come in handy. Now you can technically turn this on in the settings menu, but the easier way to do it is simply by dragging the shutter wherever you want like this, and as you can see there's basically a second shutter button here, so I'm going to put it right here, and it basically functions as a normal shutter, you can do whatever you want with it, and then when you're done, simply drag it right back onto the original shutter, and it's going to go away. So definitely a cool feature to have, one that I finally ended up using in real life. So if you are ever in a situation where you have to take a selfie or something with one hand, it'll definitely come in handy. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change your aspect ratio. Now this is a real easy thing to do, and it's definitely nice to be able to change your aspect ratio before you actually take the photo, instead of having to crop it later. So as you can see, we are currently in 3x4, which in case you didn't know is pretty much the default for any phone. So to change it, what you're going to do is go up here, Tap on this icon, and as you can see, we have a few options here. We can go to 9x16, or 16x9 in landscape, and this is great if you're taking scenery pictures, thumbnails, stuff like that. From here, we can go to 1x1, one one. this is great for something like Instagram for example. And then from here, we can go to full, which is going to be the full aspect ratio of the display, which in the case of this phone is going to be 20 by 9. And then finally, there's another one I want to talk about, and that's going to be the 3 by 4 at 50 megapixels. Now, in case you don't know, when you're taking regular photos, despite the pictures with this phone being really high quality, by default, you're actually not going to be using the full power of the camera. So with the 3 by 4 at 50 megapixels, this is actually going to use the full power of the camera, so the photo is going to be a little bit higher quality, but keep in mind the file size is also going to be a little bit larger. That being said though, in my experience, the quality difference isn't really huge, and in most cases, the regular mode is going to be perfectly fine. But if you really want to, then keep in mind, this is the one aspect ratio on the phone that uses the full power of the camera. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to change your video resolution. Now since this phone has a max recording quality of 1080p, I feel like chances are you're probably not going to want to do this, but in case you want to record a lower resolution video, maybe you're not too concerned with the quality but you want to save some space, let's take a look at how you can do this. So first things first, go to video mode. And as you can see, by default, we are going to be in 1080p, but if you want, you can also change it to 720p. But this concludes my camera tips and tricks video for the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, I will be linking to several other videos about it in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.